So welcome to R&B Reptiles Presents. We're here tonight with Megaconda, Megan Kelly. Uh, she is a <laughs> anaconda expert, and uh, she's going to teach us all there is to know about them. <laughs> so stay tuned. Bye. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You're an expert. Yeah, it's up on the, it's it's up on the screen. screen. That's what it does. <laughs> okay. Gotta get Anaconda in there, though. Yeah. I could do that. So, hi. All right, so, yeah, let's, so we can get into it now. Can we, do we do the typical? You guys want to start from the beginning? Give us the old backstory, how Megan got where she's at right now? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, tell us about you. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. I mean, I kind of just started with having stuff as I grew up. Like, I started with a ball python when I was, like, five. And then just kind of started getting more as I grew up. And then when I was, like, 15, I bought my first anaconda off Craigslist after I was told not to because my parents didn't like the stereotype they had. And I was like, well, I want one. So I ended up getting it. And I still have it. She's actually my biggest one. She's 13 feet now. I call her wow. puppy. So at 15... Would you say you're a anaconda expert? <laughs> like I, I had berms and retics at that point, but I never had. Wow, any. at 15? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, between me and my brother, we both had them. So. Okay. Yeah. And then you started collecting more and more. Like, how did you get dig so deep into anacondas? I got the one, kind of just loved it. Got another one, and then just kept getting more. <laughs> That's usually how it happens. Yeah. So. so what was the most you've had at one time? I mean, does this include babies that I produced? Sure, sure. Over 40? 40 anacondas. It's a good deal of anacondas. Yeah, that's I mean, a lot of... I have 20 just ones that like I'm breeding and like growing up and stuff that are just like mine, plus the babies wow. I've produced. And do you primarily work with green anacondas or do you do yellows? I don't like yellows. Personally, I just don't like yellows. That's a okay. little racist. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to cut that. We're sorry if this offends any yellow anacondas out there. What sure a not watch. We're going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. So, okay. So you have how how many are you successfully breeding them, I imagine? Yeah, I've had six litters of them now, I think. That's pretty good. A lot of people are having a hard time breeding green anacondas. Wow. I get two a year at this point. I started out, like, the first three years I was doing it, I just got one. And now I'm up to, like, two. That's pretty good. And how many uh, in a litter do you typically get? Typically get? Usually they average in, like, the teens. But this last one I got 20-something. Wow. Not bad. That's pretty good for green anacondas from what I understand. I don't know a ton of, like, I, I'm not a, I enjoy them, but I'm not a ton knowledgeable about it. So I want to learn more. So, so how long have you, you've been breeding now for three years, you said? Uh, well, for, no, I've been breeding for like five years. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just the last like two years I got two in the year two different females produce them okay so yeah before that i just got the very first year i did it i almost got two but the second one slugged out on me okay so that kind of sucked but... and were you working with captain born stock or is this uh, as far as i know the one i got off craigslist was wild caught but the male i got after her was <laughs> We got light show over at Dave's. <laughs> Dave's <laughs> we just got a big storm coming in, apparently. So we we might see uh, Dave get blown out to the next state. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy Dave while it lasts. Yeah. <laughs> that mustache is going to attract lightning. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> hey man, there's little bits of metal in this thing. It attracts something, that's for sure. Not women. <laughs> Not women. <laughs> so I guess I would love to know how you go about keeping and breeding your anacondas. Yeah, any, really. Any specific techniques you like to use? 
Not really. Um, I mean, you gotta throw them in a heat cycle that's pretty drastic. Like, you gotta drop them to, like, 74. Okay. okay. For, like, almost a month straight before you introduce a male. And you want to keep the male at, like, 80 before you introduce him. So, drop them to 74 at night, and what are they at in, during the day? I think we're starting at the end of the story here. What do you usually keep them at? Because I don't know, even know what you would... I mean... Anaconda at. Average, I mean, you gotta have like a high humidity, but I mean, the hot spot's always at like 88 normally. Okay, I pulled this thing out of the water, I'm like dripping wet now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kids watch this, you're not allowed to say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep it PG. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you said you had to keep them pretty humid, yeah. How how much water do you keep in the enclosure? I get try and give them a bowl that they can at least fit in to like soak. Okay. <laughs> Dave's still got lightning going on over there. Yeah, it's gonna get it a lot worse. The storm hasn't even started yet. It's gonna be crazy. We're gonna love it. It's gonna be it's awesome. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. 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 Let's not get distracted though. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, I don't really know how else to describe how I breed them. You kind of just do the heat cycle and then throw the mail in. What is it that you want? I, I'm no expert on anacondas, but from what I understand, people have a hard time breeding them. Not a lot of litters every year. Um, what do you think is the problem that people are having? That you're obviously being successful with it. Like, is there any tips um, you give these people? Or I'm not exactly sure. I kind of just got lucky the first time, and then just like I learned a lot from Ben because Ben told me how to do everything, like the heat cycles and everything, because like I struggled for like two years before I actually got him to go. Okay. So I'd always ask him questions. So the heat cycle thing, like dropping them that, I would drop them, but I would never drop them that low for like a long period of time, for like overnight. It's like a 12-hour period. So okay. like I was kind of scared to drop them that low at first, but it ended up working. Okay, and so just to be clear, when everybody's listening, you know, people that might not know, you're talking about Ben Rennick. Right. Um, so, and he, you know, some people may not know that he had a pretty good collection of anacondas. Right. I mean, he's some of the best anacondas in the country, if not the world. So. Yeah, more than just ball pythons. Right. So, so you learned a lot from Ben. Right. Did you pick up any animals from him? Um, no, but my brother used to get some retics from him. I never personally got any from him. Okay. So my brother got some of the, his ghost project, the Run It Ghost. Yeah. Okay. Those were pretty cool. Like when those came in, I used to help my brother a lot in the beginning. So now we kind of just do our own thing. So we were talking about the possible difficulties that come with breeding the species. Um, do you think a couple of the reasons that people don't have a lot of success with it is because they're working with wild-caught stock or um, trying to breed them a little too young? Yeah, I think, okay, so the age thing is a big thing. Like, a lot of people don't understand, like, females usually go around six years old. Oh. Um, I had one That's who crazy. didn't go until she was 10. Like, she was just so stubborn. Huh. Like, I what? still, I've had her, like, 12, no, 10 years? Yeah, I've had her 10 years. And she finally went. She was a little older when I got her. That, uh, that makes sense. I mean, we find that with a bunch of species, you know, when people get a lot of information about one species and everybody's like, oh, well, then they all should be about that age. You know, like not everything's a, a blue tongue skink or not everything is a, a ball python. They can breed in a year and a half or whatever. So um, we're finding more and more when you start to understand different species that it takes a, a long time for their bodies to develop. They might get there weight wise. But uh, and maybe size wise, but not the internal organs ready to be uh, hormones that they need to get start yeah. generating and whatnot. So that that's a very interesting fact about the age. Well, that's for a female. Males usually go around three. Yeah. But a few, yeah, the females don't go until they're about six years old. So, and usually, what I've noticed is the bigger they are, the more they'll give you, or they'll slug out more. So I had one who slugged out on me t almost three years ago. She gave me 27 slugs, and it was her very first breeding. 
Wow. The sad part was, is I had the males in with her. So here's another thing with anacondas. You can throw as many males as you want in there, and they're not going to hurt each other. We're like with other species, like retics, they'll fight to the death. Mm, okay. So anacondas, like you kind of want to get like a breeding ball going. So you want to throw. Yeah, isn't that what it is? They have like a, a mating ball in the wild or something. That's yeah. Dave was talking about that uh, on our last podcast. I believe. Yeah. I don't pay attention Maybe. to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I hardly listened to me too, so it's okay. <laughs> you definitely did. <laughs> so yeah, and that's so how many how many males would you say is the good number of males to put in with each female? I mean, I have two adult males that I just throw in there and then whichever one I try and I try to get the male I want to breed the female I want, and usually it ends up working. There's been like a couple times where like the one I want doesn't want to get the job done so the other one will kind of do it but i always try and like put one male in first and just see how it goes but if he doesn't show any interest just you throw in like a second or a third male and it usually helps with like competition where like the one you don't want to breed will help the one you do want to breed kind of get going mm -hmm. gotcha sense. it does make sense you could tip like a rubber glove on the tail of the one that you don't want to get in there <laughs> and now, I feel like I kind of felt like it was a good idea. And now you're laughing at me. But <laughs> <laughs> that was a great idea. It was a great idea. Anaconda condoms. It's the next big thing. I think that I think that we should do that. I think there could be a market for that. Could be. Whose face is going on it? <laughs> we'll have to I mean, heck, I, look, I mean, anaconda That's condoms. If, I, I would I do that. You too, so it's all right. Don't feel conceited. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't want their face on an anaconda condom? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I can get any nose around here. <laughs> I apologize. <I'm> sorry. <sighs> so, so, Dave, why don't we get back to this? Go ahead. Hold on. I have an air conditioner that keeps turning on, it goes on by heat. I'm going to see if I can turn it off. You can barely hear it, so I wouldn't worry about it. It's yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Okay, there we go. I can turn it off on my phone. So for boas in general, don't they usually, uh, like if you're doing boa constrictors, it, a lot of people say wait till four or five years on the females, right? Like, is that? Um, well, boa constrictors, in all honesty, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways with those. Um, so originally, everyone would say about two and a half years and about 10 pounds is a good time to start breeding your female. Um, Rich Eiley, early on when he got into the salmon boa project, got some of his females up to breeding size in 18 months and got them to successfully give them a litter. And now um, people like Vin Russo and Jeff Ronnie are actually raising their male or their females up slower, letting them hit sexual maturity at five years old and roughly in like the six to eight pound range. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to get them to sexual maturity. You could do it by getting them to size really quick. Um, that or just wait X amount of years, give them a normal diet and don't make them obese and keep them lean. And they do just great. Um, Vin Russo has pictures on his Instagram page of, um, Suriname boas gravid, where he can literally put his hand over the top of it and almost cover the entire female coiled up on the heat. So, but again, I think he waited about six years to breed that female and she was no more than five or six pounds in looks of the picture. So I guess I was just reaching for a false correlation there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, compared to bows, the condos is not like far fetched. Um, you've probably been seeing in the past. There's been some hybridizations between yellow anacondas and bow constrictors. Um, your commons. I didn't uh, know that. Someone, someone yeah. built like a sun glow boa to a yellow anaconda. That's pretty wild. <laughs> and, and there's been other. Has, uh, Megan, has anybody crossed a green anaconda with a boa yet? They've done greens and yellows. I don't know about with like a, other, another boa. Yeah, the, maybe. We're going to look up pictures of this. If we find them, we'll throw them on here. But I think <laughs> it might have been like a hybrid of uh, green and a standard boa or your common boa constrictor. Green that anacondas and Kenyan sand boas? I'm in. <laughs> 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 so you guys seen the ball python retic back in the day, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have burn balls. Yeah, the burn yeah. balls. The albino burn ball was really badass. Never yeah. But <laughs> Okay, well, Megan, um, so the breeding thing, like you said, you learned a lot of stuff from Ben along the way, and I'm sure you kind of picked up on it from some other people in the industry. Um, you know, you got your temperature drops you're talking about for about a month. 
Um, and then you start your pairings. Um, you do this seasonally. You're on your own timeline. You have a certain month you like to cool everyone down and kind of go from there, right? It kind of depends. So, like, most of them will start going around, like, now. Like, I have – my biggest one is breeding now. Like, she – I saw two locks so far, but she's now in a shed. So, that, I'm a little confused by that one right now. Because she bred, and then two days later, she started getting blue. So, it was weird, which is not normal. At least not what I've seen before. But I have one that likes to go in July, just randomly. Hmm. But – the rest of them that I have will start in like March and go until like May almost. Hmm. That's like the average for them, at least for mine, except for the one. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah, and um, you know you have the um, you know app on your phone that you always show me along the way where it counts down so you have your litters come in. Um, about how many days after ovulation have you figured out they have a litter? If you can catch an ovulation, because it's kind of hard to tell with them sometimes. Um, well, you measure it by your post-ovulation shed then, right? Yeah. I mean, I've gone 190 days, 996 days sometimes. Wow. That is a pretty long uh, gestation period, huh? Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty long process. That's why, really, honestly, only breeding a female every other year, every three years is best because, again, it's a full year plus process just to get one litter out of them sometimes. Right. Absolutely. Wow. It's a super long time from to getting one to, like, another or even just getting them up to size to breed. So you have to be, like, super patient with these animals. Yeah. The babies come out pretty big, right? Like, extremely big. I'll grab a baby. This is – this one's That's a year later. Year and a half, I think. Year and a half? Yeah, so that's right. just about ready to breed, huh? Yeah, just about. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually one of my prettier females that came from uh, my two my two favorites that I've bred together. You look, she's like super light. She looks a lot like the father. I don't know, the camera doesn't show it very well. No, I've never done it. I've tried this in other episodes. Just, yeah. if you want animals to look good, don't put them on our show. <laughs> well, hopefully we can get some B-roll of it, and we'll put up a really nice shot. Yeah, you, af afterwards you can take pictures or whatever and send them to me. We'll, we'll try to put them up. Okay, let me grab a baby. I can go full screen too, but yeah, that's your job. Cam, the right on never really does the job, though. Hey, hi. How are you? Would you blink, Dave, for crying out loud? <laughs> <laughs> There's. <laughs> the, there was comments that uh, people were like, hey, uh, so I couldn't tell if Dave was like a statue or, <laughs> like, or sometimes when you're like really into it, you're like really focused and you're listening and it's just. Yeah, I'm really locked in on my face. I pay a lot of attention to me during this. <laughs> Blinking is a sign of weakness. <laughs> so that's a uh, fresh baby? Yeah, it's probably going to bite me. So that'll be fun. It looks really dark compared to the last one. Do they um, tend to lighten up as they age? Yeah, I think it's about to go into a shed. Let's see. Okay. Uncoil. Wait, let's move me. And that was, how long ago was that born? December. Oh, wow. And when you're starting them out, do they usually start out on chicks, or are you able to get them right over to rats? A lot of the ones I've had recently have started on rats. But some of them have started on chicks. And then do you the, find they do better on rats, or do you think they should have a varied diet? I mean, they grow faster on rats. Um, the chicks are just mostly feathers. There's not a lot of meat to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's some, though, that like the really, really picky ones will start out on fish. Oh, wow. Fish. That'd have to be a pretty big fish, huh? You can ah. get, like... Lapia fillets and cut it up and give it to them, and that also helps oh. you with stuff if you want to switch them over. Surprised this thing hasn't bitten me yet. This is one of the meaner ones. It's also one of the <laughs> last ones I have left. You're gonna jinx. <laughs> so, so you're saying that one's for sale? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Not this specific one. This one's sold to one of my friends. I'm just waiting for it to not be as picky. This ah. one. They don't want it on chicks, so it's going to my friends. So I'm kind of putting in like the extra work to get it on rats. Gotcha. So, but there's a male that's still available. 
What do they uh, usually go for? Um, I've been selling them for fourteen hundred. Wow, fourteen dollars. Fourteen. What? That was that was two thousand ten. It's two thousand twenty now. It's a completely different market. Yeah. What do you sell them for, Dave? Um, I don't know. I've never had to sell one before. I just want to hoard them all back. <laughs> I don't know if you want to. So, Dave, you you have a couple. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, we can bring that up. You go with that, right? You don't give a shit. Um, so of course, you know, we started helping out with, um, Ben stuff, you know, he had his group of anacondas, um, and we had, um, I, you know, I think we kept an eye on him for about a year, year and a half. And then, um, at that point we ended up reaching out to Megan just because her experience doing this and kind of wanted to find a partner with it. Mm -hmm. Um, so we took him over to Megan's place. I want to say about a year, year and a half ago. Yeah. yeah I think yeah. like September, right? Yeah, so like I said, um, you know, I did I didn't know a ton of people in the condo community. And um, you know, breeding loans are really difficult, I find, in this industry. You know, a lot of people say you can't have partners. Um, I'm surprised you guys are still together, but you know, I'm rooting for you. Buy a thread. Um, it's a thread. <laughs> yeah, but you know, needed somebody to kind of help out with it. And um, yeah, I just figured you couldn't go wrong with Megan. Um, and you know, I think we talk almost daily about the projects. Um, she's always, you know, letting me know what's going on with them and you know, one of the litters that she had in December, or was it first week of January or last week of December? It's the first week of January. First week of January. Um, you know, Ben had this aneurysmic female that I believe he had for anywhere from eight to ten years before he passed away, and then that puts that female at least thirteen years old. But um, they never got a successful litter out of her, and finally this year we got a sex or a successful litter out of her. So I'm um, awesome. pretty excited about that. And the um, T-positive is breeding right now also um, with a couple of the double hep males that Ben had produced. And they haven't quite got the tail up in the air yet, but they are showing the female a little bit of attention now. Yep. But she can tell you more about the progress that's being made over there with that. Like what? I don't know, man. <laughs> Give me something. <laughs> <laughs> well, are they together now? Is she still in shed? Where are you at with her? I mean, I can pull her out, but she's deep in shed. Like, she doesn't turn blue, she turns pink. Like, she's bright pink when she sheds. I mean, you can put the camera on her if you want to take it off your bungee cord thingy, and, you know, if you'd like. It doesn't you know, matter. My iPad setup on is a pair of tongs, like those, like, clamp ones, and they're just, like, kind of stuck in a tub because there's a gap, and they're just spread out, and it's just balancing there. <laughs> okay, then, yeah, you don't have to do that. <laughs> we'll get a B-roll of it later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll B-roll it later. It looks like that, like, Poop emoji. Uh, absolutely that does. That's funny. That is perfect. Yeah, that's a perfect little poopy. <laughs> so, are those the? And this is me being, you know, I have known nothing about the anaconda community. Unfortunately, I'm ashamed of myself. Is, are be. those the only uh, morphs that we have in anacondas that you guys have, or does anybody else working with this? Uh, uh, majority of them are just. There's one other person who has, I think, an anery male. And then there's that T negative down in Texas somewhere. Yeah. You guys ever seen the T negative green anaconda? No. It's pretty uh, beautiful. I don't know. What kind do you have again? <laughs> we have the T positive. Right. Okay. So I don't think I've seen the T negative. I'll send you guys a picture after the episode. You'll get a kick out of it. And then, um, there's a gentleman and um that they found that pattern list a couple years ago in the wild. It's still in Brazil though. Still in Brazil, yeah. For now, uh, now that it's public, I'm sure it's gonna end up going to Europe or something like that. But um, yeah, they found a patternless male in the wild, and it almost looks like it's hypomelanistic or something else because it's got a very orangeish kind of look to it. I'd say it's like a like, brown and orange. It almost looks like you know what the green Burmese looks like. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty much what it looks like. Just like no pattern, like that color, kind of like just like a poop green or like huh. gold. Weird. It's and, like baby poop color. And, <laughs> and the eye color on that, weren't they like uh, it was like a silverish blue eye on that one also? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, and the tongue color was weird too, wasn't it? It seemed like everything about that thing was weird. Like it, it might actually be a double so mutation. Normally, anacondas have like a black tongue. That thing had like a. Almost like a silver-looking tongue. Wow. 
Hmm. Yeah, I'll take up pictures of that one also. That was a neat one, but it kind of went public, I'd say about a month or two ago. It ended up being shared on Facebook, and I think it got sent around a little bit in some of the groups. But um, yeah, definitely a very unique animal. It's unfortunate with the laws that um, I feel like every week we have to talk about something law related, but you know, mm-hmm. we can't bring in new green anaconda stock. Anything that we have is what we have, and you know, that's what we're going to live with now. But um, yeah, that's yeah, what I was going to ask. Didn't they clamp down on the imports of that? Yeah, no more import or exporting out of the country for that product, for anything green anaconda. Um, you just can't import them. Oh, you can't export them still? Yeah, they don't care about getting it out of the country. They care about bringing it in. Okay. And is there any laws with the green or the yellow anacondas? Like, do they all fall in the same category? Or is it just the greens? I think it's both. You can export them, but you can't import them. Okay. I know you can't import any yellows or greens. It's okay. funny in Jersey. It's weird. Like we have a bunch of weird laws in Jersey. And I, I know I kind of talk about that a, a bit, but you could for a long time, keep yellow anacondas here with no permits. Um, but you weren't allowed to keep green anacondas even with a permit. And they changed it to now you're allowed to keep green anacondas as well with a permit, but you need a permit for a ball Python. You can still keep yellows without a permit. Does that seem crazy? Yeah. Yeah, you can keep ticks and berms without a, a, permit. a permit, but not ball pythons. Like, it's so wacky. <laughs> it's, it's kind of peculiar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, I think in the state of New York, you can't even own a green. Um, I don't even know if there's a yeah. permit you could have in New York. Um, you can have something over, like, five or six feet in New York. Yeah, it's like, a six-foot max in the city. I don't know yeah. about the, the suburbs, but. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they have that same rule in Philly, too, I think. Like Philadelphia, you can't have anything over six foot or in the city. There's a lot of laws, but once you get to the burbs, it's like a free for all. I don't That's know. Weird. I know a lot of people in Philly that have all big snakes, like retics. So. Yeah. Uh, you didn't hear that here? I'm not going to name names, but I know a few. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Yeah. Yeah. We'll throw them under the bus later in the episode. Let's, let's hold off on that. Yeah. Um, could you imagine having like 30 reticulated pythons in the basement of a row home? Like <laughs> in Center City, Philly. I've been down in those basements in row homes. Like it's a little tough. Uh, I'm not commenting at all on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my jokes would not be appreciated in the community. So I'm going to just sit back here and listen. <laughs> but, um, well, I don't know, Megan, what the fuck? Um, what else? Um, I mean, Shows. When did you start doing shows? Um, you know, first ones you got to walk. Seeing you're in California, I imagine Pomona's the first show you ever got to see. Uh, is it a Pomona or NARBC Anaheim? Okay. Which okay. Didn't do well the last few years, but those are like the closest shows to me. So like I always go to those like as like a teenager kind of. Thing. But the first show I ever vended was Pomona, I think. Okay. okay. So you're, you do you regularly vend? Um, I don't usually do it myself. I usually end up like helping out my friends because I don't have much to sell at shows because I always sell out before the shows. Uh uh-huh. Or I don't have anything during the show because, <laughs> like I said, everything for me is like seasonal. Mm-hmm. So it's like right now I have a couple babies left. So if there was a show going on, I might go to. I might vend it, but. Like I said, everything's usually like pre-sold. So, so as far as like breeding and selling anacondas, like I I have no idea. Like, what is a, the cost basis of owning and keeping a group of breeding anacondas as opposed to what you get to sell out of it? Like, is it is it a you know a labor of love? Or are you is it a profitable? <laughs> um, I've never really done the math. Uh. With how many I have, I don't think it's profitable. <laughs> it's <laughs> hot in food. But, I don't know. I kind of just like doing it. Like, that's just my thing. Like, I have a full-time job. I do this just for fun because I like the animals. Like, Well, that's the sure. best reason to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I want you to think about and Maybe you don't have to answer right now, but so, at least soon or, or now if you can think of it. But, um... Can you give us one of your funniest stories of like, you know, having to handle, because a lot of times people handle these big snakes and they run into trouble or they have like 
some funny situation. Um, and we've even with you know smaller animals, we still have funny situations that happen uh, for us. And so it's always fun to to hear people's you know comedic stories, I guess. And and we could tell you one of ours. Dave could tell you a ton, I'm sure. Um, uh Kind of. Okay, so the double hat female, like, you know, Dave already said I have them. The double hat female, no one ever held it growing up, and this thing's like 10 feet now. It is the meanest snake I've ever dealt with. <laughs> okay. There was one day I just, like, took her bowl out, cleaned it, and I was putting it back to fill it up. And she's the kind of snake who will, like, hunt you, like, underneath the paper. Like, she's that mean. Like, it's <laughs> not fun. You can't touch her. Like, with your hand, like you have to use tools. Yeah. And she was at one end of the cage, and I just kind of was like watching her, and I was went to fill up the bowl, and she just came launching out. There's a video of it, because I have a security camera in here, and she came launching out, and like where her bowl is is closest to like the, one of the exit doors to the room. So like I just like let her come out, because like I wasn't gonna fight her. And I was hoping <laughs> that I could just like, once she turned around, I could just kind of hook her and get her back in. And she came fully out, and I closed the door, and the hose got pinched underneath the door. And she started climbing the door, and she's, like, looking at me through the window. <laughs> and it was, like, like I said, she's mean. I don't want to, like, just kind of go head-to-head -head with her. I kind of let her calm down, and then I kind of put her back. Um, but, no, the funny part is, is the door pinched the hose, and it ended up leaking. Oh. And I had the end of the hose outside the door. Which is, goes into my garage because I built like this huge snake room in my garage. So like I had to empty the hose in order to get it out into the garage as the snake is like climbing the door. <laughs> and eventually she turned around and I was able to like kind of just pick her head up and put her back in the cage. Went in mm -hmm. on her own. But like the way she just kind of behaved was like the funny, scary part, I guess, because she's not nice. Like she will bite you. She's the guy, and she's weird. Like, She's the kind of female I'm afraid will eat a male because she has tried to eat her water bowl out of nowhere. She's tried to eat her out of nowhere. Like, this thing is just kind of retarded. When you're, like, but, describing that, I'm, like, picturing the Velociraptor scene from Jurassic Park where it's, like, breathing yeah. on the window on the yeah. curtain. Like <laughs> That's exactly what we have going on right now. <laughs> and, like, the males are aggressive, but they're nowhere near as aggressive as her. It's That's like, crazy double heads that are just like mean she's like the worst like the albino's fine the anneries are okay like they're handable you can move them like with your hands but her just you can't touch her like at all like you, it's not she's not fun you need a trap box that can put a 10-foot anaconda in <laughs> i mean i found the easiest way to like clean her cage because like you know they love to soak is i like, take her bowl out in the morning and then i'll fill up a tub of water and so she'll want to come and crawl in the tub of water outside the cage and then yeah. like, that's kind of how i deal with her without having to like manhandle her <laughs> so i just kind of get her in the tub of water clean her cage leave, leave her in there for a couple hours and just then put her back that's smart yeah. <laughs> i'm really getting concerned for you over there dave <laughs> yeah. you're welcome Welcome. It, 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 it hasn't even started yet. Like, the rain is still, still coming down like distance. this. It's going to start coming down like this soon. I'm just waiting for it. Oh. It's kind of nasty out there. But okay. Um, yeah, like, so Megan's saying, you know, the double hats have always been a little nasty. Um, I brought her all the boxes out and kind of sent her on her way. And then she got home and, like, a couple of the snake bags are just covered in blood because I got hit while I'm trying to put <laughs> things in the bags initially. And, um, I had my friend's father with me who didn't have a whole lot of snake experience and I had him help and hold the bags open so I could pack these before we left. And I think he was scared senseless. Like he saw that thing tag me in the amount of blood. Like he was not a big fan of what I made him do, but we got through <laughs> and got him bagged up. But um, yeah, I bled pretty good. I still have the so bad as the leopard gecko bite, but um, <laughs> pretty good bite. Pretty good bite. Uh, so just so our audience knows, Dave is taking pre-orders on the albino stuff. So contact him. If you're no, that is not true. <laughs> yeah, Ryan put himself at the top of the list. Um, Somehow. <laughs> so you know, it's you know what's best. Just everybody hit Ryan up and ask him what he's not taking, and then we'll work it out from there. 
That's a great idea. What's your phone number again, Dave? That's <laughs> <laughs> it. Oh, I'm not afraid to put my phone number out there. We'll just put it right across the middle of the screen right now. Everyone call Dave. I might answer the phone. <laughs> text me. I prefer if you text me. Uh, Dave's not a phone person. Yeah, I'm a great guy. Um, but yeah, so um, you know, if you know, you have other projects coming up with other species. You got some retic stuff coming up. Um, you got T positive Burmese pythons, which I think are absolutely beautiful. I can wow. pull um, Nice. I'll grab him. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think you were saying there's three different lines of T positive. Uh, two or three different lines of T positive. Um, yeah, she's back there somewhere. We'll ask her these questions. <laughs> My berm nice. knowledge is. So there's two, which is the Allen Way line and the Gulf Coast line. I don't think the third line has been proven yet, but I think Bob said he had a third line, Bob Clark. Hmm. Um, not 100% sure on all that, but there's at least the two that have been like confirmed. It's starting to hail. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dave, do you have a funny story about uh, maybe a uh, animal that got a little out of hand? You just said it about the bag. <laughs> yeah, I heard the bag of my anacondas. How many crazy stories do you think I got up here, buddy? Yeah, you have a ton of them, I'm sure. I do have a ton. I do have a ton. Yeah. But this is about me okay. right now. That's true. Let's see this. That's a cool animal. That's beauty. Isn't it? Come here. You're looking very professional over there. Thanks. <laughs> My well, light. Let's let's see if I can fix this. Oh, don't touch it! It's gonna fall. So that's just an albino. It's a caramel albino. It's the Allen Wayline caramel. Mm -hmm. Almost looks hypoish. So Allen Way, um, Did he's one that started. Better? Yeah, that looks really nice. Yeah, that's probably the best looking fake we put on here so far. It's <laughs> okay. Well, the colors just work. Trust me. We tried this with a few other people. It's not better in person, but like that's pretty accurate mm. for the most part. Wow, Dave, you were saying? Oh yeah, Alan. Um, so Alan's done a lot of Burmese uh, mutations. He's got the scaleless. He started the pides. I think he started the champagne project. Wow. Um, he had these really unique red color berms years ago, but I don't think it, I don't know what ever happened with that project. But, uh, no, Alan's had some pretty beautiful animals over the years. Um, he's pioneered a lot of um, new bird mutations into this. Wow. Sometimes, I, you know, like we have these people on, like Megan here, and I'm just like so – I feel like I, I don't know enough about enough species, you know. Like there's – You don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awesome to see, like, some beautiful animals – and uh, to learn stuff like this is just, I'm just thinking about, oh, man, it'd be cool to keep, like, so many different things. But. That's the problem. There's too many cool animals in this hobby. Too many <laughs> awesome species. It's Smart. easy to get hooked, man. And, you know, we talked about it in past episodes, you know, there's a lot of species we don't pay attention to. And you actually start paying attention to them and find out all the different line bread traits and mutations and some of the backstories, man. It's it's endless. Um you know, we're, like I said, we're a little spoiled mm -hmm. in ball pythons where we have 7,000 or 20,000 different things to look at. But, um, you know, most um, species out there have at least four or five different things to play with, it seems. Yeah, absolutely. So, Megan, can I ask you, like, uh, one of the things, I guess, that people are talking to us a little bit about is that um, women are starting to become more and more prevalent in the mm -hmm. reptile community, or at least getting out there more and more. Um and I think that it's awesome that you're working with uh, large constrictors and stuff. Is there any advice you would give to women that are, you know, nervous about being out in the reptile community? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> um, Prepared to get a lot of dick pics. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sorry, go ahead. Is that the best advice we have for women? <laughs> no, no, it's not the best advice. It's a warning. It's a disclaimer. It is what a disclaimer. I just said, being a female breeder, you may get your share of penis pictures. Oh, now, yeah, snake in the grass. Fun. <laughs> I've known Dave a few that I've gotten. It's kind of been, it's hilarious, but it's gross at the same time. I've seen a lot of penis because of her. <laughs> a lot of penis. Because of her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you on your own. 
Uh, so, oh boy. So, <laughs> so we didn't even let her answer the question. So yeah. give your, you know, get get future girls wanting to do this. What's your words of inspiration? You're gonna get underestimated a lot just because it's a guy run hobby basically, and they don't think you can do it. And then you know, there's people like me who are working with big animals, and there's more women getting into it as well. Um, but yeah, you are gonna get a lot of shit. People are going to hate on you a lot. Just, just ignore it. It's, I mean, if you know what you're doing, you know what you're doing. You don't have anything to prove. So. Right on. Yeah, that's good advice. What was that? Dave is what? Looking scared. <laughs> well, there's really big things hitting top of my car right now. It kind of excites me a little bit, but um, yeah, we're good. What we don't know is he's not wearing pants right now. Uh, that was last episode, buddy. This episode, I am full pants in it. <laughs> so, but, um, what's your favorite? Obviously, your favorite species, I would assume, is the green anaconda. But what's your favorite animal in your collection? I mean, obviously, the albino on anaconda. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's been a dream of mine since I found out about it. Are we allowed to see it? That's the one that's in shed, right? I mean, yeah, I can get her. <laughs> <laughs> she can be a little iffy in shed, but we'll try it. I'm I'm excited, Dave. Don't get this... yourself locked outside, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't get yourself locked. <laughs> Dave, this is awesome. I'm on top of a mountain, so I think we're. I don't know. We're okay. We're okay until we're not okay. I mean, so really. I, I I don't have to say anything. This is all just cosmetic for you guys at this point. I'm gonna move. This. It's funny because I see the lightning over there, and I feel like there's a storm at my house. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good one. It's a good one. I just want to start hailing again. They said there was gonna be that penny-sized hail. I want to really see it coming down. The <laughs> Those look like the old uh, bow master cages. They are, and I'm not a fan. I bought them for like hundred dollars a piece. <laughs> um. Because I needed them at the time, and I want to rebuild them. So, like, I built my own cages. Well, so, like, this stack, I built these. Okay. Also That's built, awesome. I also built all my tubs. That's where I had my thing set up. That's cool. Let's, let's pull this thing out. <laughs> so, she's lucky enough um, at her father's work. I think they have a laser cutter, so she can do all the laser cutting for the wood. So, oh, nice. That was a little a perfect. I think we're gonna go big on this one. You should go big yeah. on this one. Don't get bit and send women ten years back in the hobby. <laughs> it's my own fault. I feel like you need a bigger hook. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Oh. <laughs> I have a bigger hook. She's already bitten me once. I don't want you to get hurt. What's new? <laughs> Uh, Come on. By the way, it's a very pleasant animal. Just you know, when she's in shed, sometimes she can be a little antsy. Wow! Wow! Look at that. That's a beauty. That's amazing. And Dave wonders why he's got people asking him uh, what the deal is with this and when they can get one. <laughs> it it really is one of my favorite mutations in any species ever. Um, we should have planned this podcast around it not being in shed. I mean, we can try it again in a week. Yeah, we'll you can just... send, you can send us pictures and uh, in a week or or so once she's done shedding, just send us pictures and we'll put it in. Yeah, we got some good pictures of her. So, um, Dave's posted today pictures I've taken last. Almost two years. Yeah. yeah. Say, did you want to corral out anything else while you're at it? I mean, what do you want? <laughs> I don't know. Well, your biggest, most gentlest one. Let's see. Hold on. I got to open this case. Okay. So, I got to turn it sideways. Hold on. Go full screen on that one. Yeah, it did. Okay. This is my biggest one. That's a chunky she's one. Breeding, so this she's actually like building right now. She may 
have ovulated. I'm not sure. I haven't been paying that close attention. Anyways, there's a male right here. He's friendly. This is my female. Where where's my finger? There. And then <laughs> here. Come here. Oh. So, He's a sweetheart. Wow. I love that, man. Yeah. He's like massively big. Super big. Like not her not having ovulated. Like I being somebody who doesn't know anything about this, I would be like, she's definitely ovulated, but like I don't know. <laughs> like that's she just a, that's you know, if Columbia bows can be like that sometimes. You'll go in, and you'll just see like a pretty good sized bulge, and you think something's going on there, and then nothing <laughs> happens. Cool though. That is very cool. Yeah, she's friendly. The male that's in there as well is like super friendly. Ow. I sat on my paper towels. <laughs> so as far as handability, handability, how handable they are. <laughs> yeah, don't I'm, edit that out. I, <laughs> as far as handability, <laughs> I can handle anything in here usually without a hook. Okay. Minus so, the double hats. So on average. Anaconda's tamed down pretty well. Oh, yeah. They're just the nicest snakes I have. Nice. That's awesome. Retics can be unpredictable with their, like, food response. Like, you always yeah. have a hook with the retic. And plus, their teeth are, like, twice the size, if not three times the size as an anaconda. So mm -hmm. you want to be more wary of, like, retics because they have, like, a cutting edge on their teeth, which they'll slice right down to the bone. Where mm -hmm. anaconda would just put holes in there. The only downside to anacondas is when they start biting, they don't stop. It's always just like, go, go, go until you get away from them. Mm. And plus, you got to get all those capybaras. Like, it's just a pain. Right. That's what they eat, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. They have yeah. been known to eat. Them, so. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to do capybaras for years. It's not easy. <laughs> New Jersey lets you do that? With the license? Oh, uh, probably. No. <laughs> um, we have a satellite facility in Pennsylvania. <laughs> That's not true. No, I know this. You're supposed to have a coffee bar. <laughs> I just like Kepi Bears. I don't know what else I have to show you guys. I mean, the most exciting thing I showed you. Like, that's the best thing ever. That is the best thing ever. What, Dave? Did we just peek? I think we did. It seems wait, like it. Wait, did have you? Are you breeding the uh, albino? Trying to. And the males haven't. They've been trying, but they haven't like been successful. Did you, how many males did you put in with her? Two. The two double heads. One of them doesn't like to breed. Um, he may like boys. The other one is proven because he bred the anery, which the anery is right here. But she's also in shed and not friendly in shed. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you consider putting in other males with her just to, you know to try to get a clutch out of her I mean a litter out of her non het males no because you didn't do that part where this takes six or seven years to get to sexual maturity right it takes two years to breed them again and the males take three to four years just to breed themselves so like the double het males are now five um, I think they're five because what Ben oh. did is, yeah, they're yeah. five, they were born in 15. Yeah, it was 15. Yeah, it was like the end of 15. So they're just coming to their stride right now. Well, they've no. sired maybe this past year. The one proved out, the one bred the annery. And you were you produce visual anneries out of that one. That I know of, they're hard to tell. Like as babies, like okay, so a baby anaconda start out like a brownish color and then get green. Never seen a baby anery before, but this one does look very different. Okay. I gotta wash my hands though. We're trying to figure out the ins and outs of this. Um, <clears throat> so again, there were um, nine babies, and it was double hat to visual, or at least what's said to be visual breeding. Um, ben had got in the one female aneurysmic and then years later got in the male aneurysmic. And um, we're kind of debating whether or not we had really bad odds or if there could be something else going on there where possibly the female could be an exanthic or anery and the male could be exanthic or anery, which is not compatible. 
Um, mm. That or worst case scenario, the female could be some kind of lime bread trait of just a darker green. Um, she is right. There is one baby that is starting to show a little bit of a di or showing difference, but um, not as drastic as we had assumed it was going to be. So he's a little bit darker in color. His greens are more not so green, but his face is gray. Turn that way, please. He will bite me. <laughs> See, his face is gray instead of like having that orange. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. He really likes the camera. Can we turn sideways? No, we cannot. Okay. <laughs> Just loving the camera. He's a star. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. So genetically, we got to figure this out, but um, yeah. I do. I mean, I can pull out another one. Just one sec. The other ones just ate like small rats because they're eating frozen. He's not. Oh, this one's gonna bite. That's not fun. I got one hand. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to see that we're both smiling because we've been there. We're like trying to handle ca uh, snakes on camera, and like you're like trying to be cool and focused, and then like one of them's like leaving, and you're like, no, I gotta go, and then one of them's like pooping in somewhere, and you're like, okay, these things aren't cooperating. <laughs> this one, this one tried to bite me. So that one, you can, you can you tell the difference? I can definitely see the, the orange on the face more, right. for sure. So got orange. Mm -hmm. so that one does not. It's this gray. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's wild. Don't bite me. And you can see the orange is kind of muted into the, uh, I don't know what they're called on the side, saddles or. And they're siblings. Yeah. They came from the same parent. Huh. That is cool. Yeah. Right on. And you that usually develops at, over time more, right? Right, so like a normal will get more green. Um, my babies tend to get a lot lighter in color as they grow. I have no idea what these ones are going to look like. Because the double heads have a really light green to them. And uh, yeah, they just look different. You can tell there's something different with the double heads just by like looking at them. And they have like really bright oranges too. Okay. There we go. He's he's not moving. Where's the camera? Uh, huh? Huh? Right there. There you are. There we go. See? There we go. Yeah, you can definitely see the difference. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Go home. Oh, let's do it this oh. way. Let's do a good job breeding those things because we want to buy them. <laughs> we want. <laughs> We want to know what's going on. I don't know. I might keep them all. <laughs> that's messed <laughs> up. <laughs> I really like this one. The anery. I think is anery. I'm going to call it anery just because it looks different. Now, do you name all of your snakes? Uh, Either I do or someone <laughs> else does. So most of my adults, someone else named. So I just kind of kept the names. Plus, it's easier to tell them apart. Okay. Like, if you have someone else coming to water, you can tell them which cage is which just by the name that's on it. Yeah, Makes sense. That's a fine idea. I mean, that's kind of what I do. <laughs> Plus, everyone online seemed to, like, pick up on the names, even though I didn't really say it. Other people would say their names. So yeah. the name stuck, so now everyone's like, how's this one? How's that one? It's a thing now. Yeah, it's great to give them that little bit of personality, especially for their social media presence. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Your famous animals out there. So, do you have any that aren't named yet that we could name? <clears throat> dog just peeked his head in the door. It was really funny. <laughs> Can we name the dog? Is the dog have a name? His name is Barkley. I can grab him. Can we? Can we see the dog? <laughs> What's going on with you today? <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Try to, pretty normal. I'm being a, a good interviewer. <laughs> See the the dog. Um, who doesn't like dogs? Dags. I like dags. I like dags. Get back in there. That dog sounds like it's a tasty treat for anacondas. 
Well, he's not allowed in the room and he knows it. So what he'll do is he'll just like poke his head in the door and just like look and see what I'm doing. If the dog is smart, it won't go in that room. <laughs> it's the smell. He doesn't like the smell. Although if there is like a snake set on the floor, he'll take it. <laughs> he just takes it. That's it's a dominance thing. <laughs> he's just a thief. <laughs> so you're talking a little bit about social media. Uh, so you, you're you pretty popular on Instagram. Uh, um, yeah. Do you have any secrets to uh, becoming more popular? <laughs> what is your Insta secret? What's your Insta secret? Honestly, no idea. I have no idea how I got popular. Because all I was was just posting pictures of like my pets. Yeah. And I just blew up. We're like, I've noticed where other women kind of use like sex appeal to do it. That's what we do. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, yeah. totally. Dave does all the time. Mm. <laughs> so last time Dave was here, he took my big anaconda and took a picture on my car with it. Yeah, I feel like I've seen that actually. <laughs> you got a Camaro, so I mean, what option did I have? That's actually that's pretty true. Yeah, I have seen that picture. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how I like blew up. It was just me posting stuff. I mean, I used to post a lot of, like, funny pictures where, like, I'd do, like, a double chin or something. Uh. I don't know how that got popular. Yes. Yeah, so Benjamin, just shave your beard and utilize that double chin and you can be more popular on Instagram. I do. I feel like you really <laughs> blew up after you posted that full bunny suit picture with, like, the old <laughs> bunny pajamas holding the anaconda. Like, that was, I that's what me. I followed right away. <laughs> For me, I think I blew up before that. that <laughs> Are you going to go put on the bunny suit right now? Is that what? No, oh. my dog kept opening the door, so I closed it. That would have been. We should have talked about that beforehand. You should have wore the bunny suit. I mean, oh. I grab it. I also have a snake onesie. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're not opposed to any of this. Actually, if we were going to dress up in costumes. We need to know beforehand. All right, because I have ideas. <laughs> not in the room, so I don't want to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. This light is getting worse. Right. Right. There we go. I gotta lean forward. Okay. Take it out. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, what's going on over there, guys? You have a little side conversation with us? I'm just trying to, you know. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. I'm, just, like I'm happy to be here. <laughs> He's like giggling about this rabbit costume or something. I'm not giggling. Do you want me to go get it? Like, you no, 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 no. I, don't, right. I wouldn't put you through that. I already have it on your Instagram. It's fine. <laughs> I don't think I've worn it in a picture in a long time. I just post an old picture. And I'm not being creepy about it, if that's what you're thinking. No, I like a furry was, thing? You turn this into some kind of furry thing? It, well, you know, I... I understand the furry culture. It's all good, man. Like, whatever you want to do. It's cool. Now, when you say understand, do you mean you love it? Or <laughs> like, this is a different it? interview, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you just, I'll you dress just up like a fox. You'll put your bear costume on. It'll be good. It's fine. I have a bear costume? You mean when I take my shirt off? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's in the mail. I mean... <laughs> oh, there's a bear costume on the way? Yeah. Uh, there better fucking be a bear costume on the way. <laughs> If not, you better order one right now. Great. You know there's delays on Amazon, right? Like there this is way back up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're not out of stock on that. I think we're gonna be okay. <laughs> it's an essential item, really. It is essential. Yeah, it really is. You gotta get through these times. You know what yeah. I mean? So <laughs> all right. Why don't we bring it back around? So yeah, yeah you talk about thinking something. Yeah, Megan, uh is there anybody else in the uh industry that you look up to right now aside from you know ben obviously you're looking up to him and and dave, dave. <laughs> um i don't know not really you can say no yeah you just All say right. fuck he is a trailblazer look at that she's like i don't need you no 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 i'm good no, I, like it. I like it my own thing i don't really i don't really care about social media like i said i don't know how i blew up I don't put effort into it on purpose. I just kind of post what I want. It makes me feel really bad. <laughs> yeah, we're all doing something wrong. I put so much effort into it. I mean, I think part of it is like me being a woman with like big snakes. 
Yeah. Uh, another thing is like not many people do anacondas, so like that's kind of another plus. Yep. Um, other than that, I have no idea. Well, I was saying maybe anybody in the not just social media, like people that work with anacondas or retics that you're like, oh man, they're they're doing a really good job or something like that. I mean, I have like my friends who do retakes and stuff, and I'm always like supportive of them, but I wouldn't say like I look up to them a lot. I just <laughs> I look like a They're okay. okay. They're cool. <laughs> tell okay, them. guys. You you definitely not getting the point. She's got sixty six thousand followers. She doesn't need anybody. Stop <laughs> asking her these questions. She doesn't like anybody else. <laughs> I'm kind of offended that you're continuing to ask these questions, Ben. It's not about social media. I was just trying to promote other, you know, like there's. I mean, yeah, no, I, I have no idea. <laughs> it's cool. That's fair. <laughs> I think I have more likes or well, followers or whatever on Facebook than I do Instagram now. Well, how about this? Before you were too good for everybody, was there somebody you looked up to? I mean, Ben, obviously. Hey, you didn't fanboy out anybody else, like prehistoric pets, any other big retake breeders out there? Not just independent? I'm not, I'm not touching those names, nope. <laughs> yeah, we don't actually do names on this show. Um, yeah. Ben's up. We can use you Ben's names. You can drop but... some names. Like, what? what? Well, I don't know. I mean, I was just thinking of California breeders, and that one popped in my head. There was no fine print on this one. I mean, gr not like growing up, but like getting into the big snakes more. Yeah, I hung out at prehistoric pets a lot. I mean, I was friends with Jay's daughters for a long time. I mean, I still talk to them, just not as often. Like, I kind of started doing my own thing. It's just like, I learned what I learned, but like, I wasn't into retics as much. Wow. Like, I love retics, but like, I have them just because I like them, and I have the morphs that I like, but mm. I don't, like, go out of my way to, like, have retakes. Gotcha. Like, I have a cow. I can get my cow out. I love that thing. Yeah, I saw pictures of that on Instagram. It's beautiful looking. He's in shed, but he's fun. But he's ugly right now. I can get him. <laughs> So, just for the record, we're not going to talk about furry stuff anymore? Yeah, can we not? I'm, I'm no. all right to not. Wait, baby. you guys are oh, You big baby. I didn't know that you were uncomfortable. I'm fine with the furry culture. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not uncomfortable. You you look uncomfortable. I'm, I don't feel I like don't mean to threaten your sexuality, Ben. Hmm. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> hey, it's not weird. It's not <laughs> weird at all. That's what I'm trying to say. I support you. That's what I'm... <laughs> Wow. Yeah, don't hate it when you watch Ryan do it. <laughs> I'm real good at it. <laughs> I need a Superman shirt. <laughs> I need a Superman shirt in a closet. <laughs> He's in shed. I would love cow retics, man. So he's not just a cow. He's a motley cow. Possible super tiger sunfire possible head albino. Well, Can I ask you how you know that? How do I know that? Yeah. Um, Shane Costello, who I got him from, said that. And I believe him because I know the pairing that it came from. So, like, Shane is one of my good retic buddies. He produces a lot of, like, really cool stuff. And I've gotten a lot of retics from him. Oh, yeah, there we go. There's Wait, there we go. Better picture. Nice. He's in shed. He looks a lot better and a lot more white. When he's not just so see he's pink. He's usually white. Turns well, the, the the very harsh light over top of your head makes him look white. So you're good to go. Extremely I mean, white. You look a lot whiter. <laughs> <laughs> so before when we were asking on um, people that you like, you just didn't want to mention Shane. I just, mean, you know. <laughs> I don't wouldn't say I look up to him, but I like him. He produces like, some amazing stuff like this. Don't break your arm talking about Shane. So have you guys ever Facebook stalk Shane yet? No, I'm, I'm doing it right now. Yeah, let's just say this, guys. Ten, all day long. All Perfect right. ten. Perfect ten. I love it. Perfect ten. Perfect ten. Is he on Instagram? Whatever he says has got to be true. Too beautiful to lie. SC constrictors, I think. What was it? SC constrictors. He's yeah. got that one really beautiful orange tree tick that he posts a lot of pictures of. What was that mutation? So the orange ghost stripe. I have one from 
him. It's an orange ghost shark tiger. I can pull her out too. You want me to grab Does her? Does it look as good as his? It looks, yeah. I didn't realize there were so many good looking ones out there. Yeah, you can grab that one. Um, it's how'd you do, Ryan? Did you find pictures? Okay, so like we planned this really bad. Instagram. I have I'm all over it. Shed. Everything I own right now is in shed. Like, we yeah. just bad timing. That kind of happens. And it's okay. breeding anthills. We just got a clutch of anthills. Not a lot of people are doing that. That's crazy. Is yeah. he really doing anthills? Yeah. Oh, look at that. That is. He is. <laughs> Oh yeah, animals, man. Right is that on. a magic marker on that animal? That is a magic marker. Yeah. Nice. Look at that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Seeing the picture now of the like these guys, man. Oh Super. yeah, that's the one I think she's gonna get right now. I think it's incredible. That might be one of my favorite retics ever. How can you not like that? Like it's just so striking. Well, there's that twenty foot thing, but other than that, I love it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get it in a super dwarf. Yeah. Yeah. I got this. All yeah. right. Is that a, oh, you brought a rosy boa out. A rosy boa. Is that a San Felipe or what kind is that locality wise? You don't know, do you? Okay. I'll tell you who I look up to Todd Dyer of Psychotic Exotics. He's been like one of my really good friends for the longest time. He gave me this thing. Nice. I have no idea what it is. I just I keep it because it's cool. That's part of your hybrid program, right? Sure. Yeah. Cool. That's a bug. Rosie Bell is in the green anaconda hybrids. I'm pretty sure he disappeared. He bit me, by the way. He got me. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the little ones that get you. Yep. Yeah. He's so fat. Look at him. He's I love Rosie Bowes. Those are cool. I've always loved Rosie Bowes, too. <laughs> he bit me, though. Look, there you go. There's the blood. Do you see it? Yeah, see? The one you would least expect. You're a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if the audience has learned anything, buy your kids anacondas, buy them retics, buy them berms, do not buy them rosy boas. They yeah, will they're... eat your kids. You know, they're no <laughs> super biters. I did not know that because this is the first time he's bitten me. But every time I post them, everyone's like, oh, they always bite. And I'm just like, this one's never bit me until just now. You know, there's that whole thing when you're the small kid going into school, you got to go like swing off on the first big guy that comes along to get some yeah. respect. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I think um, in this case, these ones like to hide and bury themselves. But um, yeah, I don't know. Freeze their own. <laughs> so, by the way, are we going to put a disclaimer on these episodes that the things I'm saying are not real things? Like, you know, yeah. we need a the banner along reptile yeah. expert. Right, right Anything now. that comes out of Dave's mouth, bullshit. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, she's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't know this about retakes, they love to launch out when you open any type of cage that they're in. And she's doing that. She's also shedding right now, so she looks kind of crappy. Mm. You guys want to see another crappy snake? Love crappy Oh, snakes. I love it. Yeah, please. <laughs> well, this is the most animal action we've ever had on this show before. I'm loving it, man, because nobody cares about us. They just want to see animals, you know what I mean? That's really it. Yeah, honestly. No, come back. I have don't to believe Don't ever believe it. <laughs> so yesterday she started shedding, and I bet she didn't finish. So I gotta soak her. Give me her head. But her head looks amazing right now. Come back. Look at that. Oh, oh man. Her look horrible. And what? What is the morph? She's a tiger orange ghost stripe. Tiger hmm. orange ghost stripe. Huh. Come back. Look. Look at the camera. I feel locally uneducated about retic morphs. Um, there's quite a few. Um, I used to nerd out on a lot of Jay's videos back in the day, the cutting videos. Um, Absolutely. I can pull out. In fact, my wife wants to get us to get retics because she watched Jay's videos, and she's like, "I like that one." I'm like, "Yeah, well, you're gonna like it when you gotta clean up that poop." <laughs> I, tell yeah. you what, I got a couple for sale. <laughs> I'm trying to get the super dwarf thing going on. That would be awesome. I don't have super dwarfs. I got big ones. I know. They're for pansies. I got you. Well, actually, <laughs> the super dwarfs tend to be a lot flightier. Really? Yeah. I guess they are closer to a uh, wild caught stock, right? Yeah. It's wild caught blood more because they're bred to each other instead of like other ones. Mm hmm. 
Look, I'm not great at super dwarf stuff. I'm peeling. Everyone's gonna have a field day with yelling at me because I'm peeling it. That's an ASMR video right now. That's okay. You know what I get the most like shit for? Sorry for my language. On Instagram is mm -hmm. shedding videos. Like if you help them shed, even if you're like in your hand and you're just doing this, like this thing is now. See my hand? Mm -hmm. People lose their mind. Like absolutely <laughs> lose it. Why is that? <laughs> they think you're hurting them. You're going to peel scales off. But like if it's already coming off, it's not going to hurt them. Yeah. It's a, a natural part of, you know. Right. Like, they're basically using <laughs> it as, like, a tree or a rock. I need to soak her. She just started yesterday, and she should be done. I feel bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> at least she apologized. Right? Yeah. Like she, let me get away from my face. But well, look. I guess after this, we're going to start getting hate mail for the first time ever? Hopefully. Yeah. Oh, just your bad shedding retick. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that we get hate mail. We never get hate mail. The more hate mail you get, the more the algorithm boosts you. So bring it I, on, guys. Are you guys, your guys are gonna like blow up. I get a lot of hate. <laughs> right. <on. laughs> like I'm not even kidding. You, she even told us, but while before we went on air, that she doesn't believe in Santa Claus. I mean, wow. For real. Wow. For real, kids everywhere. Are I be thought this was America. Mail. All right. <laughs> so, that is a beautiful snake, even in shed. So, are you breeding retics, or are you just keeping them for fun? Um, keeping them for fun. Um, I've loaned a couple out for breeding, and I've obviously made some that way. But. Hmm. For the most part, I'm just kind of keeping them for myself. And eventually, like, these, I got a lot of them a year or two ago, so they're not ready. Because this is a female. She's two years old. She'll be ready by three if I push mm -hmm. her. Which is, you know, the average age, most people do it. But like a lot of people like to power feed, which is like putting a meal in them as soon as, like, the lump is gone. I kind of just feed them weekly. But I do what? make, I, I mean, she did grow a lot in the last six months. She's kind of hit a growth spurt. I, I think will um, Kevin McCurley wrote an article, I think it was in Reptile Magazine years ago, might have been 10 plus years ago, but didn't he have part of the article where he talked about you could actually power feed them to the point where you can get them to grow 12 feet in one year? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, that's I've seen that happen. That's yeah, like couldn't wild. even imagine that. That's wild. I mean, I think... I do not see. recommend. Let's <laughs> yeah. find out. How long is she? Another Where's disclaimer. That? Get out of my face. There's something how, how tall are you? Me? I'm 5'11. Alright, so that retic is seven foot eight inches. No, I'm <laughs> calling, it. calling it right now. That's 12 foot old. I'm just joking. Yeah. So that cow I showed you? Yeah. He, he, I measured him. So I have this wall in my backyard, and there's like 16 inch bricks along the wall. So every time I line up along it, I just count the bricks and then do the math. He came out to like just shy of nine feet. And she's at least got a foot or two on it. Gotcha. Yeah. This okay. doesn't look as tough. What? And they never look as big as they are. Yeah. yeah. She <laughs> hides it well. Her body. Yeah, she does. Yeah. <laughs> Retics are a very slender body. Like, I have an anaconda, same size as her, twice the girth, and it's a male. Yeah, and they, three times the size. Suck it in. Second level. <sighs> What <laughs> he, he hides it real well, too. I hide it real well. <sighs> you got a piece, nice. I mean, it's all over my hands and, and me. If I stand up, it's just all over me. <laughs> so, do you have a few more? You said you had a couple more that you wanted to pull yeah, out. I mean, I've got I don't want to make you work for it. I mean, so well, I can pull out smaller ones. Okay, so what do I have? Okay, that one is a little flighty. I don't want to pull her out because she's bigger. Um, that one's mean. I got two, like, al different albinos. So I got a lavender marble and a lavender motley golden child. Ooh. Those will be interesting. They're fun. They're albino. They're a little different. Okay. Okay, I'll grab them. Sounds great. We really appreciate you doing this. I feel like we're really putting you to task here. No, oh, no problem. As long as it's not, like, the big, big stuff. Like, 
the T Pause is probably the biggest one I want to pull out because that's a workout. And she's <laughs> yeah. not huge. She's like eleven feet. And we, just uh, fun. We, we handled like a seven foot um anaconda at uh the reptarium with Barchek and that was my first time actually handling a larger anaconda and man like they're not fat at all like these things are are muscle you know what i mean like it was definitely a workout i can't even imagine something bigger than that <laughs> my biggest female the one i showed you that was in the cage with the male she's 13 feet um i think the last time i weighed her she was like 115 wow and that was before breeding. Like I beefed her up for breeding because you don't want them to get like too skinny because they do stop eating for eight months. But like, it's a long time. For eight yes. months, really? Well, yeah. some will stop eating. Some will start taking meals very you like you want to try and offer them small meals and if they take it, they take it. Like the aner the aner used to do that. Like the first like three months of her being gravid, she still took rats. Hmm. But no, I have like her, she'll stop completely. Like, she won't take any food for, like, eight months. And by the time she's done, like, right now, she's wider than my thigh. And mm. by the time she's done, she'll probably be as big as, like, my bicep, which is... Huge. Not... <laughs> yeah. Hey, right, put those guns away. Do you got a permit for that? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see some more snakes. <laughs> Bird. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Awkward turtle, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> I like how that's the most awkward moment of this episode is that. I, th but. <laughs> I apologize. I thought I was being funny. It's all, trying to be entertaining host. It's all in good fun, game. Ryan. That's fine. It's all There's good no fun. bear suit coming, by the way. You're just saying that right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I just didn't want to show my sadness on the video. Did you hear like that face? Because like, something just like popped up right here. I did, I did not. I was too busy staring at Ryan. It's a lot of people have that problem. Yeah. It's mostly yeah. the words coming out of your mouth right now. <clears throat> it's okay. I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for bear suits, but yeah. Look up. Oh, it's happening. Well, this is a lavender marble. I'm going to call Leo. <laughs> See the pattern? pattern Got a guy? Oh man, we always have a guy, but that looks beautiful. And my brother produced this one. I got him from my brother, Jeff Kelly. Yeah. That is beautiful, man. He might poop on me. Do you see his tail? He wants to poop. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There's they, one on deck for they sure. They're known to do that. Yeah. Thing, I don't want to see that. <laughs> fun thing with retakes: every time you take them out, you kind of hold them. It's always the gravity effect that poop makes them poop. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. He's going to explode, so I don't want to hold him too much more. Okay, let's... Yeah, we don't have to do that. Have you seen the... You can put that put him away, but... Have you seen the Nutella uh, thing that they're doing with kids on videos right now? It's kind of yeah. funny. The mom, like, or, or dad or whatever, sitting in the oh, bathroom. Yeah, and they, like, and they're like, like the kid's hand. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> yeah, so they ask for the toilet paper, and when the kid gives them the toilet paper, they put... Like Nutella on their hand, and the kid like freaks out. I think it'd be just as epically funny if you did it with, uh, you know, retake poop. This is gonna be fun. Just watch. And watch. You're gonna put you're gonna put retake poop out on your dog. Oh, I didn't do it. No, this one likes to jump out. Come on. That was my bitch. That one heard you talking about her, and now she's salty. Obviously. Oh, yeah, for sure. Come here. I do like retics, man. I just, I've seen the pictures of the poops, man. It's just too much. It's just a lot of space and food. I can tell you now. Anaconda poops, way worse. Really? I've oh. never seen a picture of an anaconda poop. I'm going to have to Google that. I can give you pictures. One of them just pooped this morning. I would, I'd love to see it. Oh. I don't know why that doesn't seem weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a lavender motley golden child. See this. Is the golden oh, child a single gene or is that a combo? Golden child? Yeah. Okay. 
is that the one they mix to uh, with something else to make the cow? I've I'm no, so super cow, stupid about this. The cow is a <laughs> phantom and an orange ghost stripe. Yeah, I wasn't even close. Wow. Uh, I apologize. I, I got a purple phantom. Okay. I've got two. One's a baby. It's a straight, just kind of dick. And then the adult is a <laughs> can, can I ask? So when we started, you're like, yeah, if you know if you're in a kind of. You, how many retics do you have? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven. Is that one? Eight? Nine? I think there's ten in here. Ten and a rosy. Oh, wait. <laughs> well, I missed a couple. <laughs> It's funny how you find all these snakes once you start counting. Okay, look. Yeah, I can count anacondas, too. So this one, golden child, gen purple, golden child, genetic stripe. I like that one a lot. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I man. love golden child stuff. The eyes on that thing contrasted with the freaking super orange. Oh, man. That's so, cool. Get my face out of it. No, focus. It's so, focusing. Yeah, it's focusing ish. There we go. Eye. I Those are like them. huge silver eyes with that orange. Man, that's gorgeous. This one's so cool. This one's just a baby, obviously. No, that's really neat. cool. I wish we could do that with ball pythons. That type of like super bright orange like that. Like, oh. I'm sure we can. We can do anything with a ball python. We haven't got there yet. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess I you haven't. Got some balls. You yeah, got ball pythons. That shit on here. Come on. You're, you're holding out on us. I actually know about ball pythons. <laughs> <laughs> then tell me what this is. Uh, you're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the 20,000 mutation and combos or whatever, like, tell me what this is. I can tell you it's right? Is there le there's leopard in it? <laughs> Leopard. Uh, that's got to be an. No, that's not leopard one, ivory, right? Like it, it's in shed, obviously. Oh right. One gene Pardon. is obvious for color. Yeah. Hey Ryan, you need me to hold your hand on this one, bud? Oh, calm down, Dave Levinson. <laughs> what is it, Dave? Let's let's hear it, bud. Well, how, there's how many genes? Three genes. Leopard okay, so banana, leopard, and Mojave are lesser? Lesser, yeah. I thought Mojave as well. What's that? You're breaking up, Dave. I can't hear you. There's a storm Mojave. happening. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, 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 thought, I think I you're furry costume got a little hair in your ear, buddy. You might want to get that out of there. <laughs> it's kind of glued on. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> uh, uh, I feel like this is going so far off the rails. <laughs> Yeah, this is a very different direction on this episode. Yeah, you know, we bring one girl on and it just turns into kindergarten play over here. <laughs> this one's also in Chad. So we got a uh, banana hidden G Woma lesser. No. Mojave? Yeah. One more gene or is that it? No, there's more. Uh, GHI? No. <laughs> So, banana, Mojave, yellow belly? No. Wait. Oh. No. <laughs> Wait, I'm calling kangaroo court. You don't even know. Hey. <laughs> banana crystal. Which is. Oh, banana, oh, banana crystal. crystal. I wouldn't have guessed that one. Yeah, I wouldn't have either. I don't know balls very well. I only have a couple of them. I actually made this one. It's Pawsette Pied. Oh, that's what threw me off. Okay. Yeah, that was. <laughs> <Hey, tell. laughs> That's where that belly pattern came from. I got confused on. I mean, it looked like it had that soul sucker pattern on the side. I'm sorry. Dave has the siblings. I do have the siblings. It was a banana. That banana special. That yeah. was cool. Stop working. And then I was gonna get a fan on that. No, I can't click. Technical difficulties. Try hitting the button. The button doesn't work. Don't bite me. Yeah, the... 
That one works. Hey, oh, yeah, it works. It me. Dang it, it was off screen. <laughs> I, I can't get it to. Uh... No! Oh, Canada. The button. Oh. Come here. oh, there we go. Something was going on with the screen. I literally just changed the battery a few days ago. So. Uh -huh. So while that was going on, she lost the steak. It's going to bite me. So this is a purple <laughs> phantom. Gotta go. Purple? Look at it! it I'm looking! <laughs> there we go. So it's a purple phantom. So that's a purple albino? Yeah. See? I know about stuff. There we go. There yeah. it is. Yeah. Wow. Now that it's calmed down. See, see the best. I do like retics, man. They're, They're beautiful. That is, that is beautiful. If I could only hire an employee to take care of them. Get in there. Stop it. What, 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 what about that Ben guy you hang out with? You know, as soon as he gets out of the rat room, make him go to the retics? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> did you see it try and bite me? We I, did. Absolutely. We heard it. It was the That's best. That's the fun part. Like, it didn't get me, but it's fun. And it's just a baby. It doesn't hurt. It'll just draw some blood. Like a little bit of blood. Just a little bit. Just yeah. a little bit. Just enough. Yeah. Oh, you want to see something cool? Hold on. Yeah? That's why we're talking to you. Mm -hmm. This is the best show and tell episode ever. This, this is, is the greatest. I love how we're just like discovering new things. Like, it's like, oh, wait a minute. This thing. Yeah. Hold on, I gotta clean it off. Okay. <laughs> Dave, how's the weather uh, coming along? It looks like it's starting to calm down. Man, it's over. I thought it was gonna get really bad, but it didn't get really bad. You could have at least like pantomimed it, like rattled around a little bit, like oh no. See, but I was waiting for it to really get bad, and then I was gonna have this whole thing, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we just we never got there. We never got yeah. there, bud. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. You know, it's funny. I was actually talking about the Jurassic Park scene. Um, when I was sitting in this parking lot getting ready, there was a crackhead hanging out. So I was kind of hoping when the storm started getting all crazy, he might like come against the window all like floss a raptor, but um, it just never happened that way, man. That was wistful thinking. Is that a pancake tortoise? It is. I love those. Oh, man. Those are cool. I can pull the other one. The other one has a cooler like shell pattern. This one, so I named them Chicken and Waffles. This is nice. Sick. Wow. I like it. I'll pull out waffles in a second. But I had to clean them off. They were kind of dirty. That it's one really of my dirty. favorite. Yeah. Look at they got like it's got like bunny ears on right now. The Playboy bunny ears. Oh yeah. Check that out. And a couple of other symbols that we won't talk about. <laughs> oh, I didn't see those ones. Can we do this again? <laughs> you see? I'm like, Ow, I got your foot. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's see what Ryan was talking about. Oh, the yeah. little Oh, there's there's some Hebrew down the back. <laughs> <laughs> that appeals to Ben's uh, nature. It's cool. This is the smaller one. I'll grab the bigger one. I think it's a pear. So I got oh, yeah, it, it hooked on me. So I got you a little beauty over pancake. there, buddy? We're going to double down on these pancakes. Maybe we should double down on these pancakes. What? Can we get two pancakes at once? You got to get the stack yeah, going. got to get the other one. <laughs> Can't just have a single pancake. Yeah. What the heck is that? Mm -hmm. Hey Ben, yeah, I got, got, I got something a little special for you, buddy. I can't wait. Uh, I oh so, my goodness, <laughs> David Levine is in. What was that? <laughs> I, I said, I said to, I said to Ryan before, but uh, that my my uh, grandparents when, or great grandparents when they came over, some of their family they changed their names, so I have an uncle. Who, when I went to to New York and I looked at the board of people that came in, it was it's not an uncle. So it's my great grandmother's brother. His name was Samuel Levinson. Yeah, they changed. Uh, it. Guys are related. They changed, they changed it to Levin. Yeah, I think Levinson means world, maybe or something, or maybe I'm thinking of another friend story about their family. I don't really know for sure. <laughs> um, but no, I got a Sammy Levinson out by you. Um, actually, he's in Philadelphia. Yeah. And it's That's funny, lovely. I went and looked at the board for my family name, but Goodman wasn't on there. That's weird. Really? All right. Because I got two <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
Oh, oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I think I have to get some pancake tortoises now. This one's got like a straight bunny on it. Do you see the bunny? It's got even got an eye. Oh yeah, oh, that one actually looks like the Donnie Darko bunny. It's in profile. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Like so, tortoises. What made you so get pancake tortoises? My boyfriend wanted them at the time, and then he didn't want them, so now I have them. Nice. I've My had boyfriend them for like never gives me anything. Two or three years. You guys, you guys have different preferences. We found out today. Who? <laughs> I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. What about those two guys over there? Oh. They're, they're working through some problems right now. Ben and Brian, very complex relationship. Apparently, listen. Welcome to R&B Reptiles Presents. Yeah. So I think that you lucked out on this deal. I think uh, getting pancake tortoises is uh, the way to go. I mean, I'm going to call that a win. They were cool. Yeah. One just peed on me. So that's Those I, are the breaks. That's inconsiderate. <laughs> did, it, did it pee in the last bite or did it miss the bite holes? What? Did it pee on <laughs> your bite from the snake? Yeah. Your rosy boa bite. Is it? No, it missed. Oh. That wasn't mm. even like a bite, okay? Like it barely drew blood. Like it's not a bite, okay? Yeah, Dave, stop crying about it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like the way you said that. It counts. It okay? doesn't count. Small things don't count. I mean, oh, it counts. Oh, snap. <laughs> Poor guy. I just Ro <laughs> it's like, <laughs> really? <laughs> hey, I was going to say, we're going to have to cut Never this little part. <laughs> Oh, come on. We're not getting anything. <laughs> I was going to say oh, rosy boa bites are like, you know, down here and like leopard gecko bites are like up here, but like still it counts. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're not in the same joke right now, Ben. You trying to take us in I know. I'm trying to like go with it, but it's just, it wasn't working. He's trying to get us back on the, on the rails. That's the rails, baby. Oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So we appreciate you. you uh, actually, you have been tortoises. my favorite guest since we, we've we've done like six of these, and this is the number one. I love it. Yeah. So we might want to edit that part out because you're going to offend the other five people, except for Bob. Screw <laughs> Bob. Okay. <laughs> we like everybody. Yeah, we love everybody enough. Yeah. So let's really get down to uh, Tiger King. I think this is the part of the. This episode. is the Tiger King. We got to go into the Tiger King episode. King. Lightning round, 10 minutes, Tiger King. Let's go. <laughs> I didn't think it was a, a recurring theme with us bringing up Tiger King, but it kind of seems like it. This is the third well, time. What about Tiger well, last time we were talking in Australian, and I really wanted his take on it. Um, yeah. I'm sure we limit it to different people in different countries, but um, we haven't had a girl's perspective on it yet, so this is actually kind of good. Yeah, that's um, true. We would um, like the female perspective on Tiger King. Go. What do you mean? No pressure. Holy, holy shit. Wait, you watched it, right? <laughs> yes, I watched it. I, you and I send memes to each other like every day. <laughs> well, I know, but you just get an idea and watch it vibe like when we talked to Bob. Yeah, Bob sent out a ton of memes about it, and he didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah. Poser. You, okay, you should know this about me. I don't know anyone by, like, name. Like, I don't pay attention to people in the hobby. I'm not saying that to be mean. Dang, I just don't. She is so much better than us. <laughs> like, Jeez. I'm kind in my own little world where like I do my thing and that's about it. Okay. Um well, so Tiger King. Like, yeah. It took Dave probably like four years to actually be my friend. Like he kept trying and I was just like, who are you? Hey, minimal effort. <laughs> minimal effort. <laughs> Congratulations, wow. Dave. Fucking 66,000 followers over there. Edit this shit out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay, so, so, okay, we're gonna start out with the first question about Tiger King. Um, Mary, fuck, kill Doc Anthony, <laughs> Joe Exotics, Carol Basket. I mean, kill Carol, obviously. Okay, are, are we taking all the parents? Are we allowed I mean, to say that? We're we gonna get sued. It's weird. <laughs> Listen, Doc obviously knows how to take care of somebody. All right, that's all I'm saying. I mean, well, Joe 
gay. Yeah, but okay. he's You're also talking considered. To a woman about a gay guy, like, come on, guys. Okay, well, maybe uh, you know, I don't know, marry him then, then you don't have to worry about ever sleeping with him. I'm good. I mean, I personally would probably marry Doc because he has so many other distractions. Absolutely. I'm probably gonna be like really low on his totem pole. Mm. Um, I'm gonna have the worst house out of all the wives. I promise you that. This is the deal. You bang Joe for the wild weekend, but you go home to Doc. Okay, Carol's yeah. out. Joe's got, like, diseases. Yeah, you're gonna get something from Joe, but you know, there's condoms. We discussed <laughs> this earlier in the episode. Anacondoms. <laughs> anacondoms. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have sex with Joe Exotic wearing an anaconda. <laughs> I'm this is going to be a thing. <laughs> I'm not, this I'm, might be the thumbnail. I'm I don't know. Drawing nice up the prototype <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but the first time we have a female on the show, we're not going to do a bunch of condom jokes, okay, guys? Wait, no, I have a picture. I, I'm going to bring it up. I have a picture of a snake shedding. Listen, it's a, hold these on. jokes have I'm nothing to do with there being a female on the show. Let me just put that out there right now. <laughs> no. No, not at all. This is this was just the flow. We couldn't oh, control it. I'm gonna find this picture. Well, do you guys remember when I posted the picture of the scaleless ball python shed? Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Was that a fake yes? Is this what he loves? This picture. Wait. Oh, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Should I look that's, at it first? Oh that's yeah, that's Ryan's picture. That's the one right there. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And then hold on. <laughs> I gotta get one of those bunny suits now. So that one, another one? <laughs> that one anaconda I was holding in the very beginning looks like that normally. Oh uh, uh yeah, I'll send you guys these and then hold on. Where is this picture I'm talking about? <laughs> no, that's not it. Hold on. Still trying to find it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing content. <laughs> no, well, yeah. you know, that's why we're not live live. We're going to yeah. edit. It's fine. Well, but I still don't really support this editing thing. I feel like yeah. we should really just, you know, let it let go. It hold down. We all know that everybody clicked off six minutes into the video. So no this is way. Fine. do whatever you want to do. Oh. Oh man, that's, that's you those are be. YouTube statistics. I'm sorry, people have short attention spans. Then what are we even doing here? I mean, I I watched we're gonna pull clips out of it into six minute segments. <laughs> we could just start a six minute podcast. Yeah, six minutes, and we're done. Give me your best <laughs> content. Six minutes go. Yeah, six minutes to impress everybody, and then no matter what, at minute six, we just turn it the fuck off. They don't have an option. That I don't would actually good. be really funny, actually. <laughs> be a lot I of work. Do that. I just want to see them rush all that information out those last 30 seconds, you know? <laughs> yeah. You're going to have that group of people that panic, and they don't know what to do, and you're going to have that one guy that comes in and is like, bam, and you're like, this guy, he's the guy. He's going to give you the full six. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to give you six and a half, even though you don't want it. Yeah, but I'm going to cut him off at six because we're not doing six and a half, buddy. That's right. This is getting awkward for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you told us to talk. This is your I, fault, not mine. <laughs> okay, hold on. I can't find it. I'm having trouble finding this picture. I know I have it, okay? just. You can just send it to us later and then describe it to us now. Yeah. I can't really yeah. describe it. It's like... It's Are there people babies. in it? What? Let's play, let's play charades. Charade it to us. Yes. Okay, it's a baby snake shedding... There's talking. Uh, okay. Shreds is more more acting. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, we got that. <laughs> oh, let me turn my brightness down so it's easier to see. Okay. It's better be a damn good picture. Oh, it's, yeah. Oh, that's really eating cool. itself. Right on. Right? <laughs> that is cool. First... Is that a California king? <laughs> is it a California king of conda? Yeah. Oh, like a conda pattern mutation? It's Are you kind of Say what? Are you being serious? <laughs> no, no, no. We did you not see the disclaimer? Everything <laughs> I say is not <laughs> viable information. I mean, don't I don't believe know. Dave. <laughs> don't believe Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you say some pretty random stuff. So like, I don't know with you sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm really good at sarcasm too. 
It's all I'm about the face. I've learned that. I've learned that. <laughs> <laughs> Not very good at blinking, but good at other things. Did I blink? <laughs> Does that count as a blink? You did. Oh, I, I, I compliment you on your anti blinking stance. Well, you know what it is. I drink a Red Bull every time before we do this show, <laughs> and then I just don't blink. You don't even drink it. You put it in a dropper, and you go like this. Yeah, right in the eyeball like an amateur. <laughs> like you, ma you mainline it. <laughs> this one's not in Chad. What is it, guys? Is that a banana het red? No. Oh, I'm going to go banana calico. Yes, and? Spider. Cinnamon. Oh. Yeah, cinnamon. You guys got it. Good job. Yeah, yeah, I, didn't, spider. I didn't get it. <laughs> I didn't buy it as a spider. <laughs> you guys. But it started it's not a spider. spider Just, so like, I think yeah. it has Go ahead, Ben. Pop it up there. Don't listen to Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. I was talking about my snake, and then you guys are just like over here. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Don't believe Dave, Anaconda expert. This video brought to you by fear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 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 Megan, would you say that Tiger King will leave a lasting impression in your life, or have you already moved on? I mean, I've moved on. I'm have just making jokes, but it's, okay. it's like, it's had its 15 minutes of fame, and like, I don't think anything more is going to come from it. You oh, it. I don't know. Until it's Trump pardons Joe Exotic, then we get Tiger King 2. It's on. <laughs> I saw something the other day about there being like a tiger queen something. Oh. Mm. I hear that whole community is a lot more interesting than we are. I mean, uh, yeah, they're like weird exotic people. We're just reptile exotic people. Yeah. Not know, that weird. Although a lot of people in people. the community are very strange. There's some weirdos. It takes a special type of person. You Sometimes. Know. Yep. But there's nothing wrong with that. Have you guys ever been to Hamburg? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've been to Hamburg yeah. many times. Love Hamburg. Yeah, I've probably seen you there, but yeah, it's. Yeah. I wish Hamburg was a two-day show where you spent the night. It would be Dude, way the better. They the fact that they like cram you into like a gymnasium the size of my garage is insane. With venomous. Yeah, there's like no laws on anything there. There's caimans, cr anything crocodilian, like venomous, like it's crazy. And there's so many people. Like, you can't walk. You're right. It is the best show ever. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you know, and it doesn't have to be a two-day show. I, I know no one else has told you guys this. You know all the breeders get together the night beforehand and have a lot of fun, right? Yeah, we're not in the Cool Kid Club, so this is, the first, time hearing, that. This is the first time I'm hearing that, and now I'm depressed, <laughs> so we're going to end that. Yeah, we'll be now. But I don't, I've never gone. Does that really happen, though? For yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've been to a bunch of those. Yeah. Right beforehand. There's the little hotel right there. They got the bar downstairs. We all party every single time. That's wow. you before any show. Well, because I'm really good at it. Don't give me a hard time. Well, now I have a different approach to Hamburg. <laughs> it's a two, it's a two and a half, two hour, a little over two hour drive for us, so we don't usually spend the night, but now we're going the day before. Like we should. Yeah, the next bar. <laughs> It was about two hours for me when I had to, when I was going. Where are you located? Not to be I'm creepy. California. Yeah, she's in California now. Oh, that's well, not. I was, I've always been in California. My boyfriend lived in Maryland, so we were. Oh, uh, I see. Hamburg. I spent yeah. a lot of time on the East Coast. I would see Dave on the East Coast all the time. I still used to see him more there than before. I probably still have. Like Dave never comes out here. He's been out no. here once in the last. I've like, been out there more than once. In the last two years, you didn't let me finish. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You're right. Once. once. Okay, wait. Maybe twice. Because I, like, I met you in Vegas, and that was about it. Yeah, there's the Vegas trip also. So, yeah, I've been out there. Well, semi out there a couple times. Um, no, I'll probably. I'm sure these guys. Have you guys ever been to Pomona? We no. haven't yet. We, we haven't really hit want the West to. Coast at all. Might not right. happen this year. We were planning on hitting the West Coast this year, like, pretty hard. But here's, then, you know. here's the downside. They're not doing it at Pomona anymore. They the last time I heard that they switched it to Anaheim mm -hmm. biggest pain in the ass for parking like it's where NARBC used to be mm -hmm. and there's a reason NARBC didn't do well there but Pomona does better advert or not Pomona but the Reptile Super Show does a lot better advertising for it so it brings the people in 
but parking for vendors and for people just coming was a huge issue. Hmm. Yeah, I think like, it was thirty dollars the parker. Someone told me, yeah. and if you leave the parking lot and come back, they charge you thirty again. Oh no, it was eighteen dollars. Eighteen, eighteen. Yeah. Still a lot of money. For, even for vendors, they were charging vendors even if you had the parking pass. Wow. But, so they would let you in the parking lot to unload, but they would make you move it or they would tow you. Like, there was no choice. Like, you had to move. So, obviously, you take public transportation as a vendor. Uber? Sure. <laughs> no? But most Uber? people aren't from around there. Like, for yeah. me, it's like a 30-minute drive. So, right. Anaheim's a little bit that closer to work. Pomona. Pomona was like an hour drive for me. So that was and a joke. Anaheim was uh, like, what's that day? I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're interrupting Megan right now. Now we're being rude. Yeah. I'm so sorry. That's that's his fault mainly. What? Jesus. <laughs> oh, I I didn't hear you. What? No, he's just Ryan's being rude over there. He keeps interrupting you. I'm trying to make him stop, but I apologize, Dave. I didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> Don't apologize to me. Apologize to her. I'll forgive you no matter what. Go ahead, Megan. What? Anaheim parking. What? You said that you live like 30 minutes away from there, so it's easier for you to drive in. Well, yeah. But I mean, some people don't live around there, so they can't like... For like an hour or two hours. Some people come... I mean, everyone comes out for the Super Show now. It's like people are coming from the East Coast. A lot of people come from Arizona, Colorado, Utah, um, or just even up north, which is like a seven-hour drive or more. Yeah. So... Yeah, so, so there's no public transportation, is what the we were no, talking about. So we can't. It's not easy. I mean, it's LA. You get the worst traffic ever here. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a lot like Tinley, man. You get there and then you just don't leave. There's no reason to leave. There's a hotel right there, man. Just stick on those grounds and you're good to go. Yep. But um, they're going to alternate. I think they're doing what? One time a year in Anaheim and the other time of the year still in Pomona or all Anaheim now? Think as far what I heard is he's a three year contract in Anaheim right now. So the next few shows, so there's two shows a year for Super Show. There's one in January, which is always the biggest one, and then there's another one in August, which is a little bit smaller usually. And he has to he has a contract with the venue for the next I think three or three to five years. So the next few shows are going to be in Anaheim. What happened, what I heard, is like Pomona double booked it and then kicked him out. So he hmm. had to find another venue. Oh. That's unfortunate. Uh, no, you guys, honestly, um, it's definitely a show worth going to. Um, I think the first time I went might have been like five years ago did we meet or six years ago the first time I went out there. Six or seven. Yeah. Um, and honestly, like I said, the diversity in different species is amazing. Um, you know, we were talking about Black Pearl a couple weeks ago. Yep. Got to meet him at that show. And again, there's a million tables there, but that was one table that stuck out mainly because of Eastern Indigos. But um, no, I love Pomona. I think um, Pomona's probably my favorite show to actually walk around at. Yeah, we definitely want to get out there at some point. Um, we really do enjoy, you know, changing up and going to different places just to even to meet different people because, you know, the crowds are different. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's people that go to Pomona that they wouldn't go to Tinley or they wouldn't go to Daytona, things like that. So. Uh, definitely want to get out there. Hopefully they, you know, turn these shows back on and, you know, who, who knows when and, and where, but they'll they'll come back around at some point, but we just don't know what they're going to look like, you know? Yeah, I think the only thing that kind of stinks and not that it's that bad, but um, I think Pomona and um, Daytona Beach are back-to-back -back weekends. Oh. So, Ooh. yeah, you kind of have to pick your poison on that one. It's tough to do them both. Is Daytona still, like, a thing because of all the laws that are happening? Oh, um, yeah, it's not as big as it used to be, but it's still a thing. Yeah, no, it's it's you know a lot of vendors actually say they still do very well at that show because it's not as big as it used to be, and they still get um you know decent foot traffic there. But you know a lot of the laws in that state that affect the shows made it harder for certain vendors to come in from out of state. And I don't know, I've heard of people you do your paperwork wrong. I've heard horror stories at that show about it. So I don't know. Yeah. I've never personally been to Daytona. Uh, I've never been to Daytona, so... Oh, Storm's coming back. <laughs> well, we're almost at... We're, we're coming up onto the two-hour mark. I don't know. Dave, did you want to add anything? Closing remarks? I think that... 
Oh, I think I've had way too many remarks already, but um, I think Ryan's turn, actually. Maybe. No, Ryan uh, brought it. Um, I don't know, Megan. You got anything else you want to throw out there? You feel like we need to know? Um, you know, anything that, you know, any other species you might want to work with in the future, or are you just going to keep this kind of thing going? Um, so I'll see what else I can pull out. I got nothing. It's just kind of all the same snakes now. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy just working with anacondas. I kind of want to downsize a little because, like, there's a lot. <laughs> I have yeah. a lot of them. Um, I'd mainly, if I downsize, I'm just going to, you know, I'd focus more on, the you know, like the morphs than, you know, my own stuff. So, mm -hmm. so I think I'll always have, like, everything else. Like, I'll always have a couple retakes. Like, my berms are, like, my favorite berm project. It's, like, the only berm project I have. For the caramels um yeah i think that's pretty much it so okay dave you want to you want to bring us out on this one i i mean megan we really appreciate you coming on and and we had a lot of fun i think you know this is one of those ones where we're joking around a lot we got to see a lot of really cool animals um so i i had a lot of fun uh, i mean go grab one of my lizards i got a black dragon I might get cut up because the nail, but I can go grab it. That's cool. I mean, I I think we're okay, but I, I do enjoy black dragons actually a lot. Yeah, I wanted to bring it out. We'll have one last black dragon on and we'll wrap it up. All right, Sounds like a plan. Up with black dragon. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> oh, man. A little bit different this time. A little bit, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, are we going to feel ashamed when we go back and watch this? <laughs> I'm having a great time. I'm not going to go watch it. <laughs> so I'm having a great time. It. You guys are trying to shame me. <laughs> so that's whatever. I mean, it's cool. I, Brian, first off, no one has tried to shame you once in this episode. <laughs> I was fully supportive about you having sex in bunny costumes. <laughs> um, I feel like there's other really nice things I've said to you, or maybe that was it. I can't even remember now. In um, fact, you're right. You were very complimentary. Ben has been a dick. <laughs> You know, I'm sure as soon as he said that, he crossed his legs over there. It looks a little uncomfortable. Um, I do have to pee. <laughs> oh, is that what's going on there? You don't have a bottle like that? I've already yeah, peed twice this episode. <laughs> you got to get the anacatheter. Anacatheter. Dang, oh, we're going to go. I don't think I can handle that. Anacatheter. I don't think I can handle that. That sounds like too much. I'm just going to put that out there. Okay, that didn't work. It's hungry and tried to bite my finger. <laughs> Usually it's friendly. <laughs> but I did have food defrosting on top of the cage for it, so that's not a good plan. It's all good. <laughs> you know, that strong it. finish. What else um, is it? It's really cool. I promise. <laughs> it's quite all right. Yeah. I but, um... No. <laughs> <laughs> gotta raise your hand. What? I'm oh, you have to raise your hand. If you're an expert, put your fucking hand down. Both you sons of a <laughs> But, okay, well, honestly, I think this was a lot of fun. Um, I'm yeah. really hoping that we didn't offend you in any way. I really <laughs> hope it didn't come off, you know, any way other than lots of respect for what you've done with anacondas. Um, yeah, you know, like absolutely. I said, when we needed someone to work with, there was nobody else I would have called besides you. Uh, I'm sure one of the two other people are going to get offended by it, but, you know, what can you do? Um, Who else would get offended? We're not naming names. This is a no-name <laughs> show. I want to know, um, though, because, like, Oh, what are you starting drama for? This is a drama free show. <laughs> drama free. It's true. Yeah. We are 100% drama free on this show. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, yeah. Honestly, I think that was great. Um, like I said, I've always found anacondas very fascinating. I really cannot wait to see baby um, T positives on the ground. I think they're going to be oh, absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. cool. Like that day cannot come soon enough. Um, and Love yeah. That. So yeah. can't wait to start counting down the days. Um, you know, we posted some pictures recently, and I'm sure Megan's going to start posting a lot more of that project now that we've talked about it. Um, but yeah, we're going to try to keep the whole timeline going on this. Let everybody know what's happening. Hopefully, have a countdown to when we actually get to see a litter of babies. But um, you know, as long as Megan doesn't fuck it up, um, you know, <laughs> we got we got a real strong future in this project. Okay, okay. she's already like slugged out before me, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah. I, cool. I have faith. Yeah, I have so much faith. I have all the faith in the world. Yeah. Um, not sarcasm. I don't want to fuck it up. So now You're I not going to fuck it up. It's okay. It's fine. Yeah, we can edit this part out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it in. We're good. No. But, um, 
Yeah, like I said, I'm um, really happy to be working with you on the project. Thrilled that you're willing to come on here and do this with us. Um, I'm sure we're going to have a follow-up, especially when we start seeing babies in the future. I know these guys yeah, will absolutely. love it. Um, absolutely. You know, if you and Ryan put himself at the top of the list, um, you'll be the first one to know. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I so, appreciate that. <laughs> well, back, finally. <laughs> and just so you know, Ryan, I've only said that to like five or six people, but I'm pretty sure those people thought I was joking. So I don't. You know, I know you don't. I know you don't. <laughs> I'm pretty sure as soon as baby dro babies drop, like you know, it's gonna be like all over everywhere. Like I'm gonna want to post it. Yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be amazing. I, so I really can't wait. No. And then, yeah, and then hopefully sometime over the next ten years, they'll produce a snow. Um, and God knows what that's gonna look like. I'm so cry with her. She's so mean. But she, yeah, it, I'm gonna cry with her this year. But I'm kind of. I don't want to stress the males out too much with breeding because they do stop eating during breeding season. So I'm mainly just trying to put them to the albino, but if they want to go to the double head, if she's more willing, like we'll probably see them sooner than later. So that's awesome. Hey, you're the expert man, whatever you want to do, you do. I've been saying it since the beginning. That's great. That it would be such a big step for like the hobby, the community and, you know, just anacondas in general. I think it's great. It's really exciting. I'm really excited about it. One of my dream projects. I've wanted it since forever. So, so cool. I'm really happy Dave came to me for it. So, yeah. like I said, you're the only person I know that does condos. I mean, I, a you're the best too. person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're the best person I know that does condos. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, but all right, Ben, you got um, you got your big rollout. Um, we doing Ryan this time. You get okay. One last question before we roll out of here, and this one's for Ryan. What furry would you be? <laughs> um, it'd be a blue and gray fox. I'm just, blue and gray fox. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Ben? Maybe a dire wolf. I dress like a gummy bear. Remember the okay. cartoon? That's a little deep seated, but I'm into <laughs> it. Um, how about you, Megan? What's your um, what's your furry of choice? I don't know. Okay. I'd go with my rabbit suit. The more important question is, what is the class of your furry? The what? My furry is so a rogue. we will have a full furry <laughs> episode in the future. That's yeah. a problem. Yeah. And we will invite on a real furry, not just people who pose. And um, then we'll try to really understand what the hell Ryan's talking about right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be good. I feel yeah, like... And, and Dave, what's your, what's your furry of choice? Oh, God. Um, you know what? I need whatever I can to close. I'm going to go koala bear because no one ever says no to a koala bear. Don't they give you chlamydia? <laughs> I'm not worried about it. They I don't do. think. Hey, they STDs do. don't affect dudes. Doesn't I matter. Mean, that's what I heard. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I hear monkeys give me herpes, but I'm not going to stop kissing monkeys. <laughs> I mean, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. We're gonna do a little research on this chlamydia thing and we'll have a follow-up <laughs> on that in case anyone's curious because I'm honestly this just piqued my interest. <laughs> I don't uh, picture Dave as a red tail hawk. I mean I don't know. Red tail hawk. Okay. I don't I hate mean, that. That's just it's the first thing that pops to my head when I think Dave Levinson. Red tail hawk. Okay. I, don't I do see like that. I'm gonna still go with koala because <laughs> koala close. Koala, okay. He's not fierce enough to be a hawk. Not fierce koala. enough to be a hawk. He's yeah. like cute and cuddly, but he won't kill you. Like a hawk, if you if you're like food for a hawk, they'll kill you. That's yeah. not if a man with a mustache like that won't kill me, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I've watched a lot of serial killer documentaries. <laughs> this is like confusing me with somebody that looks like this. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, you gotta like yeah. cut the thing off. Yeah. 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 We're, we're we're past serial killer mustache. We're in a whole other realm now. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, all right i think that we should close this up <laughs> i think we should be out of here like an hour ago i think that <laughs> this is the best episode way of part. all time by the way all right so <laughs> if you guys like this video for all the people that are watching hit that Optimism. like hit that like button the thumbs up there and hit the subscribe and you can see uh the more stuff that we got out we'll put megan's uh instagram link below and facebook so you guys can check out what she's got going on and, uh, you know, put a comment down below. Let us know what you thought about the episode and uh, what your highs and lows were. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> so they, hey, I, 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 I thought this was great. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Covered everything that Ryan loves. Furries, anacondas, and Ben. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> wow. So I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. She'll never come back on the show. And if you want to hit up Cheryl, she's getting out of that project now. Really? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was, man. My little camera just went down. Uh, can I call you? Does everybody say that you're like a talk show, talk show hostess? Like people no idea. compare you to Megyn Kelly? Like, Oh, well, yeah. People confuse me all the time with that. I get random messages like, Hating on her, even though the names are still completely different. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I won't do that. Okay, <laughs> don't, don't do that. You can make a joke. I don't care. It is. Good. I didn't even know there was another Megan Kelly. Wow. <laughs> Should I know that? Is that is that like common knowledge? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's all right. I'm sorry. That's all right.